Thanks for your time so far. Other properties of fly ash. Now, when you are going to put fly ash into something, this is <coughs> rule of mixture or when it goes to composites and things like that, the weight percent is important. What is the density of steel? Who can tell me quickly? How many grams per centimeter cube? What is the density of aluminium? What is the density of magnesium? Okay, steel is about 7.5 grams per centimeter cube. Aluminium is about 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. And magnesium is 1.7 grams per centimeter cube. So if you can use a filler, which is like fly ash, typically varies between 2 to 3. So weight wise, density of this is as good as aluminium. Aluminium is 2.7 grams per cc, much lighter than steel. So these are the things. So depending on other fillers which are pe people use, because if you use low density material, it will make it lighter. So whether you are carrying it on your shoulder or whether you are putting it in your car bonnet or whether you are, it is taking in a truck, so it will involve less energy. Okay? It's like when I had my weight of 80 kilogram, my doctor used to say, Ben, you have to reduce your weight. I said, but I cannot reduce my food. He said, don't have to reduce your food. Keep on walking more. And then he said, okay. It has come down by 7 or 8 kilo. I said, that's very good. And then I told him the advantage of that. Also. So I have to spend less energy on my movement. He said, yeah, you can use more energy in your brain. Our doctor is a, of Greek origin, a very nice person. And... He never suggests to take medicine. He always said, he said, I'll suggest you take care of your body, then you don't have to take antibiotic, no other th medication. I said, good. So that's how we go. May I start? Yes, I didn't hear anything. May I start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Didn't hear. May I start? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, density of fly ash varies in 2.1 to 3.0 gram per cc, depending upon the iron content of fly ash, and specific area ranges from 170 to 1000 meters square. All right. Because of its low density property, fly ash is being used as filler material in polymer. Now we are coming to polymer, this one. So we have shown this before, depending upon the type of coal used, fly ash is classified as follows, anthracite, bituminous, subbituminous, lignite, so we can pass through there. Percentage amount of element present in fly ash is nothing but the characteristic type of coal burned. So that means, depending on what kind of coal you, you get, now there are different types of coals and some coals have more water, some coals have much less water. There is an Indian company who are now trying to buy a large uh, large range of coal. What is, what is name? Ad, Ad, yes? Can you say the name? Adenai, something like that? No, no, not Adi. There is N. Not anthracite, a name of a person, a businessman. Indian businessman who, is a, who has bought lots of areas are actually trying to buy coal production. Yes, yes. Uh, something like that. But there is, there is some hitch going on between the two things. But it will sort out and I think lots of, lots of coal will come from Australia to India. All right? And you can, if they are, hmm? yes, Adani, yes, 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 now I remember that. 
which state is from? Gujarat. Gujarat. Oh, normally expected, Gujarat is the business state in India. Yes, but since you mentioned that, I had taken nanotechnology to the state of Gujarat in 2006-2007, so that was nice. So, through so LDRP Institute and uh, Vishwakarma Engineering College through them. So first, I took nanotechnology for one day and we developed a course for all the Gujarat universities. And then after two years or three years, I went back and had a one week uh, workshop involving all people. So that was also I had gone to Baroda, I was in um, Kandinagar, in Ahmedabad, then Baroda. It was a nice place. Gujarat is in. Also, I had been to Atira. You know Atira? Ahmedabad, Techn Ahmedabad Textile Industry Research Association. They are very good also. Yes, try to go and work as much as you can in Gujarat. Gujarat is a very good business. All right? And it's such a safe place. In Gujarat, where in Atira, you can walk. Ladies with all ornaments and things like that, they are never worried about it. At the time, Sri Narendra Modi was the chief minister of Gujarat. Okay, the amount of fly element present in fly ash has particular range for particular coal. So this is a normal thing, but it is worth knowing that. So before you start taking thinking what is the fly ash, go for the composition of the coal, and that will give you because there is a coal, the carbon which burns. The alumina, silica, those things, they do not burn, but they remain in the fly ash, okay? Now, the principal components of bituminous coal are silica, alumina, iron oxide, and calcium, and various, various amount of carbon, varying amount of carbon. So, amount of carbon is indication of loss on ignition. It is denoted by LOI loss on ignition. But as I said, half of the people when I, when I teach that I asked in one class, what is LOI? A professor said, uh, <coughs> limited oxygen index. I said, that's, that's good, but that's for polymer, polymer thing. And then, so even the same thing can have two different meanings, okay? On combustion of lignite or subbituminous coal, fly ash contains high amount of calcium and magnesium oxide with low amount of silica, iron oxide, and carbon. That means it has low CI, CO, low LO, less LOI. Table 3 shows composition, comparison of bituminous, subbituminous, and lignite coal. Anthracite is not included, it is used in very less amount usually only in utility boiler. And from here we can see that amount of silica, 20 to 60 percent is highest value among all the elements in bituminous fly ash. So silica, 20 to 60, 40 to 60, yes? This is bituminous, this is subbituminous, this is lignite. Yes, amount of silica contents is uh, all the element is in bituminous fly ash. This is the oh, you mean to say that? Yes, actually, it looks like it's similar in both, 20 to 60 and 40 to 60. Okay, that's a good point. And then, thanks for picking it up. All right. So lignite has the lowest amount of silica. Subbituminous has about 40 to 60, so it should be the higher one compared to bituminous, 20 to 60. After that, Fe203 is 10 to 40 percent value, and L L203 is 5 to 35 percent, follows them. So, Fe203, then L203, and calcium oxide and magnesium contents are very less, 
about 1 to 12 percent and 0 to 5 percent. The silica, alumina, aluminum, and are the principal elements of bituminous fly ash. Here, bituminous, what it actually wanted to say here, I know it's 20 to 60 watt is also high, but you are right. Subbituminous also has the same range, at, at least particularly low one. But what it wants to say here, in this bituminous, you have not only high silica like 60, you can have a high alumina 35, high Fe2O3 40. And so these tables are actually taken from other published. So, so that's where they are. So we did not have any right to change them. Okay, so that, but it's a good point you have to. That's why I come to India. All right, because Indians have good eyes even without wearing glasses. All right, give a big hand. And that's why I never sleep when I come in India. So silica, alumina, iron oxide, and calcium are the principal elements of bituminous flies. And that's why we actually include these references. Because if you go back to the, the book chapter, so that that shows what is the here. On the other hand, lignite flies contains 15 to 40 percent calcium oxide and subbituminous fly ash, 5 to 30 percent calcium oxide, which is very high compared to the calcium oxide bituminous. So this shows that different ranges of oxides are there. But what it shows, except LOI, all the other things are oxides. Except the LOI, LOI is the limited oxygen, the uh, loss on ignition, not limited oxygen index, loss on ignition, which is carbon, everything else is oxide. And oxides are very good because they are ceramic particles, they, are, they don't oxidize because they are already oxidized. And unless you go to very high temperature, they don't. If you use carbon, then they may form something else. But the carbon can take the oxide, and then they can become silica and other things. But that's the way you actually generate those elements. But magnesium oxide is typically three to one percent, and one to six percent, depending on. The, the types of the materials. Now, LOI is the parameter which differentiates bituminous fly ash from subbituminous and lignite fly ash. The lim uh, loss on ignition value of bituminous fly ash is 0 to 15 percent, which is much higher than LOI of subbituminous 0 to 3 and LOI of lignite 0 to 5. Now, this is something which the literature said they mean to say that. 0 to 15 means they mean to say that average is 7 and a half percent. That's what it says. Because that's how publishers, they present their thing. If they say that 15, 7 and a half, it may be that some of the coals may have very little thing. So that's why to save themselves. And these days there's a lot of, do you use the website authenticate? I think there is a new website which has come and our university is very particular in using that. I think if you go to I T H E N T I C A T, it actually analyzes all papers and things and it said how much has been copied from other things. So huh? I think it I small I a chalk hai that play pen hai my ye likh sakta hu main likhna bhul gaya computer aane ke baad likhna bhul gaya mere bibi ke naam bhi nahi likh sakta hai can you see that I T H E N T I C A T E, authenticate because it is worthwhile. Our universities say that you know there are uh, no. I cannot read it from. Can you all read it or shall I use it? Looks like this is a grey black fly. Yes. 
I'll use a near Wagner fly as chalk. See, this is a near white and fly as you can see it much better. I can take it. Either dekha, udhar dekha, dekha andar aur bahar. Now, this song will not be done again. That song was written by who? My shoes are in Japanese, this is not a blue in English. My head is on the head, and then I am in Hindu. Who was it? Mukesh Ji. Mukesh Ji. Mukesh Ji. Now, let's see, there is a difference between near white flyers and Grey green flyers, okay. So if you are driving on the street in the evening, and if it's raining, so you can see if the road has near white and flyers, you'll be able to see it much better than if, if you have. A, all right. Thanks for asking that question. There is God on the top, and He wants me to show the, the whiteness, but He put the question through you. All right. Always believe in God. कहाँ पे रखा हुआ? This indicates that amount of burnt carbon present in bituminous flyers is large. And it is less in ignite. So what it means to say that even after burning you are burning the coal, you actually have this much amount of carbon left there. Whereas in the less in this one. So this is the coal is burned, but that carbon is not burned. Then as discussed above, color of bituminous fly ash is darker. That is the bituminous fly ash is darker than the color of sub-bituminous fly ash and so this one. Types of fly ash on the basis of chemical composition. So now we are coming to the industry node. They have mainly two types of fly ash. Class C, class F fly ash, class C fly ash. And these groups are defined by ASTM C61 on the basis of the amount of calcium and silica, as well as aluminum and iron content in the fly ash. So these are all these references. And again, as I said, if you get a copy of these, this is from uh, Professor Carr, you can get. And this is what we do, as, as I said, as our university suggests us to do. If you are given things, give proper acknowledgement of the references so that, all right? Our university is a very good and very strict university. Okay. But the students all love me more than any other one. Because this is the way I deal with students. Actually, I have a song for students. Oh, students, you are our sunshine and the light of our eyes. We do hope you prosper, we do wish you conquer, and in your life you rise. Oh, students, you are our sunshine. Life is tough out there, only hard work and discipline will care. And you need to be honest and wise. We do hope you prosper, we do wish you conquer, and in your life you rise. O oh, students, you are our sunshine. We help you on your way. We push you, we pursue, we sway. At times we are not nice, but we do hope you prosper. We do wish you conquer, and in your life you rise. O oh, students, you are our sunshine. Someday you will find us not here. You will carry the school torch and the flare. 
that will be our bond and our ties. We do hope you prosper, we do wish you conquer, and in your life you rise. O students, you are our sunshine. O students, you are our sunshine. O students, you are our sunshine. And the light of our eyes. This song is actually in one of my my CD, songs from my heart. So we'll come back to that. So these are the references given for this. The next slide. So class F fly ash. Typical range of calcium content is one to twelve percent, whereas class C fly ash, the calcium content is in the range of 20 to 40 percent. So, calcium, start, what is the beginning of the word letter for calcium? C. So, that's why if you have more C, if you have more C, you get the name C. Okay? If you have more C, so that makes it easy. If you have more C, then you get more calcium then you call it C. Now you may ask the question, why then the less calcium is called F? I don't know. Anyone any idea? Professor Kamalkar, you have any idea? Why is the fly ash with less than less uh, calcium content called F? It may be, it may be failed failed F A I L E D, something like that. So but anyway, failed carbon calcium content. But anyway, I don't understand it today. If it have said if if it would have said L, that means less carbon content calcium oxide. But that's how it goes. And it's all done in the Western countries. Okay. The calcium is mostly in the form of calcium hydroxide. Calcium sulfate and glassy component in component composition with silica and alumina. Generally, combustion of harder and other older anthracite and bituminous coal produces high class of fly ash. So that means there are less calcium content. Class C fly ash is produced when younger subbituminous or lignite coal undergoes process. That means if the mine is not very old, then you can generate. Class C fly ash. Also, comparing the amount of alkalis and sulfate, class C fly ash can be separated from class F fly ash. So, there are two main kinds of fly ash. Class C, if you have C, means high calcium oxide content calcium, and class F, less calcium content. The main chemical difference between class F fly ash and class C fly ash. Lime content in class F is around 10 percent, whereas in class C is about double, 20 percent. Now, even though class F fly ash possesses pozzolanic nature, glassy silicon is a cementing agent, requires a cementing agent like Portland cement, quick lime or hydrated lime with the addition of water to react and produce cementous products. And to produce geopolymers, anyone working geopolymers? Yes. And geopolymers, geoplastics, also a part of civil engineering, also. So civil engineers are there. Are many mines which actually generate these things. They use geopolymers because mining engineers have that aspect. To produce geopolymers, class F fly ash requires chemical activators such as sodium thing. Now, on the other hand, class C fly ash not only has ozalonic properties, that means it takes up water and it works like cement, but it also has self cementing properties. The class C fly ash, where you have more calcium oxide, it automatic automatically behaves like a cement. So, if you put it in cement as a filler, it, is, it has a semantic property and it does not require any activator. So that is the advantage of class C flyers. So that's why I put some of the things in red, some of them blue, 
and again. So, so that you can, when you're reading it, you can see the highlights of the different, different parts. Okay, and that's the way. I suppose when you prepare your own slides, it takes a fair bit amount of time, but it even makes you understand. Make this also makes me follow and understand it. Okay, because different color makes it clear. So pozzolans are broad class of cilia cells and aluminous materials, which in themselves was a little or more cementous value. So these are the these these are the websites which are given or publication. So class C and class fly edge. This is this is going back to those four T fifty ninety sixty 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 those four fly edges. From here you will have silica, alumina, like that. Here you have classic calcium oxide is point four plus point four two point one nine. So they are much less. They are much less. And you have already got the size distribution before. So this shows from here you can work out which one is class C, which one is class F. Now, SA morphology of typical flyers are shown in figure 2 in an earlier lecture and chemical compositions. They are given in figure 4. Remember, we showed this uh, SA microstructure, and these are the compositions of those four flyers samples. Combining figure 2, that, that means those SEMs, and the table 4, it can be concluded that particle size does not affect chemical composition of flyers too much. Except as particle size decreases, iron content and magnesium content of flyers decreases. This is one thing. So there, in the figure two, those SEM particle, the particle size decreases from T59 to T64 in the same manner as iron content and magnesium content of flyers as, as it decreases from 5.5. So that is what is again given in. So there is a good relationship between figure two, that means particle size of the flyers and the compositions. So that is a worthwhile thing. That's why it is important to do some SEM. So I'd request all of you, through Professor Kamalkar, I mean, if it's possible, to do some scanning electron microscopy analysis of particles so that you can actually have a feeling of what those things mean. So that will give you a direct knowledge of that. Now, there are also this information beforehand was exactly opposite to iron content and magnesium content. So the major component silica increases gradually with decrease in size and as well as in table. Table for remember that size on the, this side. These are the size. So the amount, the, the particle size depends also on the composition. That's what it says now. Other than these two changes, there is no other change observed in the composition of flyers as a function of particle uh, composition of flyers as a function of particle size. Also, this is important. Particle size does not affect LOI content. The particle size is the the particle size is not related to carbon, and LY is the unburnt carbon, so particle size has, does not have an effect on LY. Other elements in fly ash, also some other elements are present in some fly ashes like arsenic, molybdenum, uranium, zinc, and Lead is also there, but not so far. I have not seen any paper where they have said lead, but they said that it can contain. But that's why we go through all publications and things to find out where it is. Okay, but in one of the earlier slides we say that if there is, there may be some lead, but we have not found much publications where they have shown lead. A study was done in, even in Turkey. 
study was done which proved that sometimes concentration of these zinc magnesium sorry zinc molybdenum and uranium are very high this is because coal feed is very high than global users these elements are very precious so flyer should be handled carefully however the mode of occurrence of these elements is not known and research is going on so these are the these are the this is the publication and this is the website and so application of fly ash as seen before fly ash a wide range of beneficial properties that can be used in various fields as given below in the structural field cement and concrete and these are all the references in that book chapter flowable fill fly ash bricks and tiles structural fill embankment road base like i was mentioning road base okay make a, making it much cheaper sub base that means be, below the top base roofing tiles and paints as well because there is so much of paints available and if you can use fly ash and fly ash has different color and this is lots of paints have different color you can use sometimes you can see green paint like here this is a brown brownish paint and thing like that and if you are if you use our near white and flies you can use them in white paint so these are the things in the structural field in the mineral field you can use it snow and ice control blasting grit mining applications gypsum panel products waste stabilization agriculture so these are areas where mining applications mining industry there's lots of technology there are civil engineering structures in mining industry now i've not gone much into mining but my young can you speak yes because that's what because when you do mining so you can either go underground or these days there are lots of mining where you actually do drill and blast drill and blast so you do it from the, so when you drill and blast lot of things have come up there holes and things like that and also water comes in so if if you can use fill up flyers there that can fill up and there is not be much water and things like that filler material yes. yes yes but that that's it but at at the same time this is mining industry also use fair amount of composite structure so you know this structure below there is a tendency of using carbon fiber reinforced composites and you can put in in those composites if you can put the fiber at one of one if you said that do you put a fly ash in epoxy yes if you can put in that composite if you put flash and the epoxy and then put the carbon fiber then the composite becomes much stronger much stiffer okay so these are all new areas of research these are all good areas of research because then that makes it the flyer is structural part of a structural component okay our university has mining engineering department and the mining engineering department also interacts with our department and they do a lot of work particularly in underground mine not not have our ground but in the under, underground so this we have for safety of people this composite structure is very important flyers can be used there in 2004 amount of flyers produced in usa was this many tons out of that about 40% was recycled and remaining was dumped so like that in so every year it keeps on growing and a couple of years later it flyage was about 44.78 78% strong so this this year so this one going goes like that between 40 to 43 44% are utilized just coming to the last three four slides use of flash in constructing field 
more than 80 percent of recycled flash is used in construction fields such as concrete or in concrete products, in blended cement and in raw feed for clean structural fill or sometime in road base. Now, use of fly ash in concrete, the history is, if we say table 5, which has, I think is the next page, about 41 percent of recycled fly ash is used in concrete or in concrete products as replacement of cement. So, this is very, very important. Now, it depends on which countries and which other places, but this is up to us or you people, future engineers and current engineers and things to make the cement industries use more and more fly ash because fly ash has prosalonic property which is very good, similar to that of cement and fly ash is much more stability also. And another thing which is possible, crack initiation and crack propagation can be much less because there is fair bit of bonding and when the debonding takes place, the debonding takes energy rather than a crack going through, if we are debonding, the debonding Takes, play, uh, it takes a lot of the energy, so the energy level corrective stress field immediately goes down. Now, we have said for many years, even Volca Volcano's flash was used as pozalon, and we have used the word pozalon, but it's worth mentioning that it's a silicous or silicous aluminous material which possesses little or no cementious value. But in the presence of moisture, it reacts chemically with calcium hydroxide at room temperature and it forms cementous compounds. So that means you don't have to go for any high temperature or things like that. So fly ash can be a good replacement of cement. The pounding experiment was done in the Italian town Pazuli, thus the product name is given as Pozzolan. Further, the city is known as the birthplace of fly ash concrete technology. So, many years ago, actually, that Pozzuli did a lot of new work. This is a table. Amount of flyers produced per year over the last, say, between 2004, these are the published ones. And then, this is the total fly ash let's say 100 percent and then concrete concrete products 41 percent blended cement and fit. So, this is what is given from 2000, let's say 2008 and these analyses are going on, it comes on maybe after a few years we will know what happened in 2012-10, but this gives an indication that in different one total fly ash use is 41.6 percent, so like that and this all gives all these tables. So, these tables are quite important. So, you can see cement and concrete 41.7 percent, 46.6 percent during 2004 and even in 2004 it was 50 percent. So, the other parts structural filler or embankment in 2004 it was 16 percent, but in 2008 went up to 27 percent. So, this way the things can be used. In the agriculture, it has been 0.1 percent, 0.2 percent, 0.1 percent, not much used in the agriculture. Waste stabilization is about 8 to 10 percent. The total amount of fly ash used like 41, 44 and 2004 it was 39. So, typically between 40 to 50, it gives a lot of areas. Now, you can in, in, increase it to if you use in plastics and things like that they did not do things like that. And then you can, even if you use fly ash 2 percent, 3 percent in plastics, that will be a huge amount of thing. So, we have almost come to the end of this lecture. Just a couple of more slides left. The best example of durability of fly ash. So, even 2000 years ago, fly ash was used. And If we go to the next page, this is how all these buildings from 2000 years ago was built of built by using fly ash. Can you see that?
So, next lectures will go on introduction to concrete and its ingredients and then how Flash can use it. So, at least just one page is given that this is an introduction. Concrete is a mixture of cement aggregates, sand and rocks and water. Some other integrates ingredients are added to improve concrete quality and to make the process more feasible. Concrete is an essential element, essential material in construction because it forms a bond between two different materials, maybe between two bricks or between bricks and any other material and hold them in a structure. And the strength and durability of structural structure totally depends on the quality of the concrete. So, if you can improve the concrete by fly ash, that is very good. So, ingredients of concrete are now, a lot of people do not know that, concrete manufacturers also do not know that, you have Portland cement, you have fly ash, aggregates, water, chemical admixtures, you have entering, entraining agents, water reducers and super plasticizers, accelerators. Now, as cement and concrete have some commonality in properties, it is worthwhile having a short review of the properties and ASTM specification of concrete ingredients. Next lecture. So, next lecture we will spend more time on what are the types of concrete and how basically it is science and technology of concrete formation. Okay. So, civil engineers are very familiar with that for us, but may not be of that chemistry. The chemistry part may be more understandable by chemists and physicists, but it will give a lot of learning. So, that is what I have learned a lot of these things. Okay. So, so, with that, this third lecture, my part is completed, but I leave it to Professor Kamal Kikar and you prepare.